I'd like to talk about a quote that's become very important to us at Volume 1 and the work that we do here in Eau Claire and the broader Chippewa Valley. It's something I've written about before, so you may have seen this, um, but let's just take a look here. The community stagnates without the impulse of the individual. The impulse dies without the interest of the community. This was said by a smart guy named William James, an American philosopher and psychologist who did his work in the late 1800s. Fast forward 125 years later, and I found that quote, and have pretty much since emblazoned it on the battle flag of volume one. So why is this quote so important to us here? Well, we do a lot of different things. We make seven different publications with a readership of more than 50,000 people. We make a network of 10 websites with blogs, videos, photos, totaling more than 3 million annual page views. We have a highly active set of social media feeds, reaching more than 23,000 fans and followers on five platforms. We produce dozens of community events, concerts, art festivals, winter events, all attended by roughly 30,000 people every year. At our world headquarters downtown, we have the local store, a mission-driven retailer with more than 2,000 locally focused products by regional makers as well as from our own team. And in that space, we also have an art gallery and event space, the room we're in right now, which hosts talks, film screenings, record releases, workshops, more than 100 different events every year. And finally, in our lower level, we host Eau Claire's first co-working facility, a space for entrepreneurs, freelancers, and remote workers to have a place to come and do their work. So we do a lot of different things, but what we really do is create and facilitate loops. Let's take another look at that quote for a second. The community stagnates without the impulse of the individual. The impulse dies without the interest of the community. This is a loop. The first part of this statement impacts the second part. The second part impacts the first part and it just goes around and around. We can look to science or audio as an example of this. You have a microphone and a speaker, for example. You'll talk into the microphone and the signal goes into the speaker. It comes out as sound, and sometimes that microphone might pick up that sound again and send the signal back, back around again. It's called a positive feedback loop, and the signal just resonates and gets bigger and bigger. So in the case of a quote like this, we tend to look at this within the realm of what Volume 1 does as sort of a cultural feedback loop. And keep in mind that the word community here doesn't have to have just a geographic connotation. It tends to, within the work that Volume 1 does, we talk about the Chippewa Valley. But it can really mean any kind of interconnected group of people, big or small, around the world, who just have some thread of commonality. So when a community or a company or anybody understands and harnesses this concept of a feedback loop, we believe it can have a major impact on almost any endeavor. Let me break that down a little bit further within the work that Volume 1 does, what we see every day. Let's say there's a person in the community in Eau Claire here who has an idea, an impulse. They want Eau Claire and the broader Chippewa Valley to be a more bike-friendly community. They want to start a family biking event, like a big one. They can work on that idea on their own, and they might get far with that, and maybe they'll make it happen. But where things really get powerful is when they start seeing supports from the citizens around them. So when those people come in, now they, are, they can support that person's impulse by saying, hey, you're on the right track, you're doing the right things, keep going, and that can help. They might take another step beyond that, and they might say, I can help you as well, and I can help pitch in and become part of a group that's pushing this concept forward. And so when those two things happen, the impulse and the support, that's when you'll see a community success of some kind. This event now happens, and we have this amazing family-friendly biking event taking place. But what's really impressive about this type of equation is that what seems like the end result is really just the beginning of the feedback loop. Because now that perception of success that that person has had, the, the original idea person, they've been emboldened by what they, what they created and what support that they got, and they might take on another idea. Or maybe one of the people who supported them saw this play out, and now they think their impulse might have success in the community as well. And more importantly, a random bystander from the community who had nothing to do with this but watched it play out, that gets in the back of their mind that maybe what they want to do for this community could also work. So this feedback loop is the model for everything that Volume 1 does. It's the key to whatever modest success that we've had. It's the key to the success that Eau Claire is currently seeing. And I think it's also the key to any future success we may have here. This concept of loops has served us well at Volume 1, not only because they're part of what we do, and I'll talk more about that, but because they're part of our DNA because we were built and we evolved in a feedback loop. So let's just jump back a bit. A lot of people ask how Volume 1 started. And it might sound trivial on some level, but to me, it's partly because of these three guys. This is a band called the Buddy Ravels. They formed in Eau Claire in the late 
mid-late 90s, and I was a student at the university here. And I went to a show at the Davies Center uh, to see a national band, which I've since long forgotten, and they were the local opener. And so I watched these guys play, and I thought they were just absolutely incredible. So I bought the record, took it home, and I listened and listened. And I had this realization that, wow, these guys are from Eau Claire. This is just amazing to me. And at 18, 19 years old, it was the first time that I realized that amazing music, art, or any kind of creative output or any output didn't have to come from New York or LA. It could come from communities just like Eau Claire. And obviously that realization came in handy later on as we started to explore this community with what we did with Volume 1, but it wasn't quite what started Volume 1. Fast forward a few years later, and now I had a band, and the Buddy Ravels, who had since moved on to Chicago for their personal careers, were coming back to Eau Claire to play a, a new record release show. And I thought it was important that everybody saw how important these guys were, that they were the next big act, they were going to put Eau Claire on the map, you know, back then. So I went to the Daily Paper here, which will remain unnamed, <laughs> and I said, there's this amazing thing happening, you have to cover these guys. Here's everything you'd possibly need. Here's the contact information for the band, for the record label. Here's press photos, here's the music, now go off and do your thing. And they said, nah, thanks, but no thanks. And so I thought about that for a day, and I thought, okay, they're busy people, they're doing a lot of different stuff. A lot of deadlines, I'll help them out. I will write something for them. So I took it upon myself, wrote something, and I called them back up, sent it over, and said, here, I wrote, wrote it for you, it's all done, here's everything you need, go for it. And they said, yeah, thanks kid, but no thanks, it's not really how it works. And so, today I understand that, a random 21-year-old kid saying, you have to cover this random band that you've never heard of, they're going to be the next big thing. I get it, you know, it's a little irritating, I suppose. Back then, I was completely flabbergasted as to why they weren't interested in this major cultural event, <laughs> you know, of course. I also didn't understand why they wouldn't take a free contribution from the community. So none of that stuff just made sense to me. And so as I was thinking about this uh, for a while, it occurred to me that all of our local media were doing all their thing. TV stations, radio stations, papers, and everything. They were doing the stuff that they did, and they were doing a great job of it. But I still felt like some things were falling through the cracks that really needed to be supported and nurtured in some way. So, a few months later, I'm talking to my friend Dale Carls over lunch, and we decided maybe this is something that we could do, something we could you know, make a change with. And so a few months later, that, that rejected article to the Daily Paper became the very first article in the first issue of Volume 1. So there you have an impulse to create. And that could have been it, and a lot of times that is it. But thankfully for us, support started pouring in. Writers and photographers and illustrators saying, this is something that we want to be a part of. What can we do to help? And most importantly, perhaps, readers and advertisers were saying the same thing. This is something we want in our community. So the vision for what we were trying to do was being pushed forward by more than just ourselves. So there was an early but modest success. But our own feedback loop had been set in motion because people of the community started to not only see the success that we had with our idea, but more importantly, they were reading about the impulses and the ideas and the successes in our pages that other people were having, the stories we were telling. So this loop is the basis of all of our efforts. We were born out of a loop, and now we've built a platform that facilitates loops for other people. For example, if you want to start a business or a nonprofit of some kind, we'll take that, we'll write a story about it, we'll put it in print, we'll put it online, we'll put it on social media. So hopefully other people who have like minds of yours might find you and support you in some way. Or maybe you don't want to start something yourself, you just want to be aware of what's happening out there in the community and be one of those supporters. Well, every two weeks and every day, we put content in the magazine and online, a whole buffet of other people's impulses and ideas that you can pick and choose what you're passionate about and what you might want to be involved with. So another example, back to one of Volume 1's own, own impulses, is the Sounds Like Summer concert series. This is what that event looks like today, but if any of you were there in a very cold day in May 2006, this is what it looked like. <laughs> They didn't have the farmer's market done yet, the trees weren't planted, and I came up over this ridge and I saw this labyrinth and the rocks and this whole bowl and I thought, this would be an amazing place for a concert series of local bands and food. So there you have another impulse, an idea, right? Well, not quite, because that wasn't the original idea this time. That goes back to the people who said, you know what, we need to do something for downtown. That goes to the people who said, you know, at the confluence of our rivers here, we should put a park of some kind or the person who said, maybe we should have a labyrinth, some small space for performances of some kind. So we were just the first responder, just part of that loop. 
we supported the original idea. Then thankfully, hundreds of people started to support the idea that we had for a concert series, and then thousands of people started to support it. And now, you've got 2,000 people there each week at what's become a full-blown festival of music and food, pushing downtown culture in a whole new direction. But what's really cool about this example is that the loop doesn't even quit there. Because within a few years after starting our event in Eau Claire, communities around the Chippewa Valley said, maybe this is something we could do in ours. They saw the success Eau Claire had, so they took on events at their own scale that was right for them and made a concert series happen, similar to the one in Eau Claire. And now 10 years later, music in the Chippewa Valley is an even bigger part of our identity than it had been before. So what are these impulses? They're not waiting for someone else to do something. Maybe seeking forgiveness instead of permission and just figuring out those details later. It's the times when people say, you know, here we are in the neighborhood. You know what they should do on that corner? They should put a park there. Or you know what they should do in that empty storefront downtown? They should put like an ice cream shop or something. It's realizing that the they in those instances is me. It's you. It's all of us. We have a poster in our office that says, we have a strategic plan. It's called doing things. <laughs> Buying one's entire existence, for better or worse, <laughs> is just a series of impulses. But thankfully, we're not alone in those impulses. And in our business, we get to see them every day and share them with you. Let me show you some local people who had an impulse of their own and were met with support of their own over these last 15 years or more. This guy decided to put a major corporate headquarters downtown at a key time. This woman opened a retail store on Water Street. This guy started a theater company. This guy wrote a book about life around here. This woman opened a restaurant. This guy started a rock band. And originally, this guy just wrote a little software program. All these people had passionate impulses of their own. And at some point, they were met with support of their own. But imagine if they hadn't gotten that support. Everything would have stopped. They would have taken their impulses and the eventual impact of those impulses to a completely different community. So we'd not only lose them, but we'd lose untold amounts of people they may have inspired to have their own impulse. And the feedback loop stops, and costly things can happen. So I believe this on a profound level. Where you put your attention as a community matters, because you get what you measure. Things like housing, jobs, education, taxes. These traditional metrics, and many more like them, are very important for measuring the vitality and the health of a community. But they're not enough. 14 years ago, Volume 1 started measuring things like creativity, measuring culture, measuring community. The stuff that gets people excited about living in those houses, having those jobs, and going to those schools. And when you get that kind of stuff right, everything else starts to fall into place so it's just a little bit easier. So we tried to nurture a more complete feedback loop of ideas and support, ideas and support. But how do you get more of those things? Well, as I mentioned, one way Volume 1 tries to generate ideas within the community is to show the ideas and successes of other people build the community's confidence in itself, develop a yes culture, an idea culture. And never is our effort in that regard more apparent than with the theme issues that we take on every year or so. We'll look at topics like reinventing our streets, rethinking our rivers, rebuilding our neighborhoods, or just this last summer, our music capital of the North issue. We'll take a deep dive on these topics to examine what's here already that we should be celebrating, what could be here with a little bit more work, or a little bit better collaboration. And we'll look at other communities around the world, like Eau Claire, to see the successes that they're having in these areas in hopes that reading about them will pollinate the thinking here. Basically, we use design, photography, and writing just to try to make it cool to care about this place. When Volume 1 first started, among many circles, it used to be normal just to complain about Eau Claire, just whine about it. But now, after so many different people with so many successes, in one giant feedback loop later, now it's more fashionable to seriously and passionately care about this place. And for the first time in years, it feels like everyone is finally pulling in the same direction. So I believe this cycle of impulses and support and its many reverberations 
has transformed Eau Claire, and especially downtown, over these last 10 years. The most visible of those transformations are in the structures and the storefronts and the events that we all see. But make no mistake, the most important transformation has been this community's attitude towards itself. Where cynicism and fear used to be, now there's a growing optimism and an embracing of what comes next. And this is why we're at a particularly exciting, yet I think also vulnerable time in Eau Claire right now. So many ideas have been laid out there. Hotels, restaurants, bike trails, TIF districts, breweries, parking ramps, new developments, and a massive new art center. We need to make sure that all of these things are successful for the loop to continue at full strength. It's a huge cresting wave of impulse that needs to be met with a huge wave of support. And only that will ensure that the next wave of impulses behind these will not only be successful, but will even be there to begin with. So what are some of these next impulses? Well, this is Trish. She opened a cool food-focused space for special events and classes. This is BJ. He's a professor who launched an organization for local writers. This is Julia. She worked to open a brand new hotel downtown. This is Kate. She was just elected as the youngest woman ever on city council. This is Evan. He started a recording studio and performance space for local and touring musicians. This is Laos and Teresa. They opened a Bavarian-themed beer hall and brewery. And this is Becca. She moved back to Eau Claire from California to open a gift store downtown. For all these people and more to succeed, we need to build a community, a culture, that isn't afraid to have and support ideas. A place where the positive feedback loop is very strong, where everyone knows the power they have to influence this place, and everyone does their part to actually do that. The most critical thing you can do right now is engage in this new culture. Pay attention. Talk to your friends and family about what's happening. Be thoughtful about how and where you spend your money. And in whatever way works for you, believe in, speak about, and participate in our community's current and coming success. Now look, I realize this can all sound a little grandiose. I tend to do that sometimes. Uh, and now that we all have our rose-colored goggles strapped on nice and tight, we have to be careful we don't fool ourselves into creating a false reality of some kind. Uh, in fact, my wife often makes fun of me when my head gets a little bit too far in the clouds, and we all need somebody like that. Uh, and a while back, she sent me a link to this article from everybody's favorite fake news source, The Onion. It says, Mom reports that hometown actually has a lot going on now. <laughs> and normally with The Onion, the headline is enough, but this one cuts particularly close. So I'd like to just read part of this quickly. It says, noting the addition of some nice new shops and restaurants downtown, local mom Erica Dodson, 52, confirmed during a phone call with her daughter Ashley today that their hometown actually has a lot going on now. Dodson reportedly revealed to her 25-year-old daughter how she read in the paper that Riverside Park would feature free concerts every Thursday during the summer. <laughs> Quote, you'd be surprised, she said. The downtown farmer's market has gotten really big, too. And Mamma Mia is coming to the new Performing Arts Center. <laughs> so they, they, they nailed us on that one. But something is happening here, and people are taking notice. Lately, whenever Volume 1 is hiring, I've been seeing a trend in the language of the cover letters we receive and in the conversations that I have with applicants. People are sensing that something is changing in this community, and they want to be a part of it. They're looking for an opportunity to kind of get in that game in some way. Students are staying and returning here after college, not because they have to, but because they want to. People are moving their young families here, not only because it's a great place to raise a family, but because they want to be a part of this whole new vitality that has taken hold here. And that's all awesome, but none of it matters unless we keep this thing going at full strength, unless we keep building the vision in our own individual ways, big or small. Thankfully, I think right now our community gets this quote, loud and clear, because stagnation and dying impulses are the furthest thing from all of our minds. Because right now, we're all building a community that is unafraid to have and support ideas. That old culture of, oh, that'll never work here, is quickly fading, maybe even dead. And a new culture has been set in motion, one where we say, I love that idea. We can make this work. 
yes, let's do it. And that's the kind of community where I want to live. So thank you for your years of support for Volume 1 and for our shared vision for this place we all call home. Thank you.